Let's get started with the matter of the fuel subsidy and what President Tunubu is doing. So today, on the floor of the House of Representatives, a letter transmitted to the National Assembly from President Tunubu was uh, read, and that letter is about seeking an amendment to the 2022 Supplementary Appropriation Act. The president in that letter says that the amendment was to allow the federal government to source 500 billion naira for palliative to cushion the effect of subsidy removal on premium's motor spray known as petrol. Let me allow you to listen to how. We'll be coming to uh, that information, which will be very important for us tonight. L listen to what the speaker, uh, how the speaker read that letter from President Tunubu. Request for the amendment of the 2022 Supplementary Appropriation Act. I write to request the approval of the House of Representatives for the amendment of the 2022 Supplementary Appropriation Act in accordance with the attached. The request has become necessary in order to, among other things, source for funds necessary to provide palliatives to mitigate the effect of the recent removal of fuel subsidy on Nigerians. Thus, the sum of 500 billion naira only has been extracted from the 2022 Supplementary Appropriation Act of 819,536,937,815 naira only for the provisions of palliatives to Nigerians to cushion the effects of fuel subsidy removal. While I hope that the House of Representatives will consider this request expeditiously, Please accept, right, Honorable Speaker, the assurances of my highest consideration. Sign, Bola Ahmed Tunubu. All right, based on that, in when, when the president was meeting with uh, the governors of the class of 1999, the president is asking Nigerians to be patient, promising that he will come up with palliatives to assuage the sufferings. What is the nature of these uh, well, it is. And when he was meeting with them, he's make, uh, made some uh, promises that Nigerians paint, he understand them, but the Nigerians need to be patient with him as he comes up with uh, ideas on how to, you know, relieve the, uh, the pains of Nigerians. But let, let's get a, an insight and perspectives on this one. I'm being joined by a former presidential candidate and an economist, Mr. Tope. Uh, Faswa, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Faswa, for joining us tonight. Thank you very much. I appreciate um, uh, You look at it. Uh, you and I, you've been on this program and we spoke about the policies of this government. You agree that subsidy must go. But the fact uh, a lot of people are criticizing is the plans to cushion the effect. Now, the president is now talking about the plans to cushion what? The people are already having a pinch already. But... Give us an insight. Is this a loan? Where is this money coming from? This is coming from 2022 uh, Supplementary Appropriation Act uh, uh, budget. What is this all about? Is the money floating somewhere? Is it now a pass? Is it kept in one bank? You are the expert. Give us an insight. Okay, thank you very much. But um, as you heard, uh, nowhere was loan mentioned. I've, I've already seen online people suggesting, oh, they are going to take loans and all of that stuff. You know, I mean... This is like uh, sort of a environment from uh, the supplementary budget of 800 billion plus, uh, which, uh, which President Buhari got um, against the 2022 um, budget itself. A supplementary. Uh, yeah, supplementary the... to the 2022. So nobody's talking about the 2023 budget now, just 2022 budget. Uh, that, that bill actually went in, in somewhere in December 2022. Um, to say that, look, because of the flooding that happened in 2022, uh, there was need to spend some monies and so on. So what we're doing now is to say that, uh, look, the, the flooding is an issue, but now there's a general problem which needs to be attacked. Uh, the government so the funds were at the time was 816 billion. Exactly. So the they're taking 500 out is now that. wants 500 billion out, out of, of that. And, and that's, that's, you know, I mean, I think we have some financial geniuses uh, in government, you know, already. And um, that's, that's a good move because we're not talking about, I mean, you, you see, when you're, when you're running a government, you must think of everything. You must think of everywhere you can get money. So this is one place that can get money. 
It's not about borrowing new funds. Remember that Nigeria, as an entity, as a country, every day we are making money. We are making money, ships are birthing, we're making money in MPA, in the Massa, in uh, FAN, we're making money everywhere, in customs, people are clearing goods. So it's an ongoing thing. At the end of the month, they come together, they say, okay, this is how much has been made, how do we share it, and all of that. So I think Nigerians should be happy that at least now we're moving on the issue of palliatives and reliefs for the people having taken the very hard decisions that the government has taken. So, in my mind, uh, and I don't know, and we, we need to hear from government what mm -hmm. their plans and a global... We, Nigerians need to be uh, 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 giving an information on what the global plan is. Now, Indeed. the 800 million US dollars, uh, that yeah. money from the World Bank, you have to spend it from if I mean have you taken for it? what no have no you that, taken it the, the money has been approved. Uh, what bank has come to has Nigeria? It, it has not been disbursed. Uh, yeah, so, so the, the premise, just for a moment, the yeah. premise I'm saying is from what I know about the World Bank, mm -hmm. if they ask you to buy something uh, with the money they are giving you, right. you must stick with what they want you to. Absolutely. So that money uh, <laughs> they've stipulated what that money is yeah. going to be meant for. Mm -hmm. But I have a feeling, and you, you need to give us an inside, an expert opinion on this, that the 500 billion is what the president thinks he wants to spend the money on, other than what the World Bank 800 million US dollar is for. Well, Do you, you think so? No, no, no. You, you cannot actually tell the mind of government for now, given the fact that it's an emerging story. So a lot of things are going to be clarified in a few days. The $800 million that was being worked on, and which, in fact, the World Bank said they had started working on this since 2021 or sometime that, that far, has, has been approved, perhaps not disbursed. And, you know, it doesn't mean that by all means we must take that money. If the new government says that, look, we don't believe in the purpose of this money, for example, that money is actually meant to be shared to people. There are some lawyers, in cash. Mr. Fallon has said, yes. that money cannot be a loan. It has to be a grant. Indeed, but, so that, that controversy but it is, is a loan. Bad. Indeed, I think it's a loan. Initially, we thought it was a grant. Yeah, I think, but based on I, our I laws a, and the body so, of our laws, mm -hmm. it says it, Nigeria cannot get a loan for, which, for, for that kind of which purpose. Which is shares to, to people. Invariably, but, you know, uh, and, you know, in international finance, you also have to be careful. The point is, if you look at the, the hierarchy in international finance, the way they've done it is that organizations like World Bank, IMF, they get paid first. And it doesn't matter what they call the kind of money, if you have to pay back at some point in time, it's a loan. So I don't think that the present government believes in giving out cash handouts, except in very rare cases. And of course, you have to safeguard that to ensure that it actually goes into the right hands. We had some very bad experiences around COVID time when monies were disbursed in that manner. So I don't also believe that this 500 billion is going to be spent in that way. You know, because I think we have um, a bit more deeper thinking in government now than what we used to have. I mean, and and it, perhaps I could I could second guess them. Yeah. Uh, that perhaps where they, they, there's a need to spend on transport infrastructure now mm. to reduce the cost of transportation for many people. There's a need to begin to target where the inflation is coming from. For example, helping the farmers in order to reduce inflation. Okay. There's a need perhaps for them to begin to prepare for paying maybe higher salaries for the civil servants. So there are many ways you can spend that money, all right? Not, not necessarily just saying, oh, we've given the money out to some people. If you give money out, that's inflationary money. Let, let me, let me for example... Let, and increase let, inflation let, let, the let's take the fancy of our viewers tonight, especially those right. who are government workers. Uh, and there are suggestions as to... People are already suggesting the number, the figure, the minimum wage should be raised to right. from the 30,000. So you imagine, for example, the wage bill of government will go up yeah. should there be a jack in the minimum wage. Yeah. So this could be, this 500 billion could be also a package. In, should it, I mean, that could be a low hanging fruit, isn't it? Money directly into the hands of people. Yeah, well, you, you've got uh, to be because very careful about their that. Their purchasing because... power has, has dropped. Uh, absolutely, indeed, yes. But you have to be very careful about that. How high do you want to go? Uh, remember that, number one, you still have to think about whether the private sector can catch up with it. Because mm -hmm. whatever you're doing in the public sector must be replicated in the private sector. I don't want people to sack staff and all of that. So how do they cope? What about the informal sector in mm -hmm. general? How do they... So if you give money... It's, it's been done before. You give money to, to a public servant, they rush to the market to buy things, prices go up, mm -hmm. and other people begin to suffer. So I would... Yes, it seems like there has to be 
an increase in wages across the board, even in the private sector where I operate, or even now I've increased my staff salary already without, you know, because it's just, it's just we see what's going on in, in the country and of course you must do the needful. So, but again, I wanted to say that this 500 billion is just the beginning. This is the government of renewed hope. Okay, it's just a case of, okay, listen, there's a 800 billion there. Can we claw it back while we're thinking of other things? And of course, I believe, look, and if you look at the savings the government is going to make, the government is going to be getting considerably more money as a result of the floating of the Naira. Mm -hmm. More Naira is going to come in for every dollar, um, every dollar uh, income that comes in for well, government. The first one. And of course, yeah. again, you know, in terms, of, apart from the uh, floating of the Naira, even in terms of the deregulation of the sector, of the petroleum sector, there's considerably am amount of money, considerably so, amount of so money is going for, to come for, in. For those of us, of us who are not very, uh, we're not economy and uh, finance, uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, we don't have so much knowledge like yourself. Where is this money? Was it hanging somewhere? Is it being kept somewhere? No, like I because said. Because 800 billion. Uh, is the money... Like I said, no, no, so it's a case of, listen, if you set so, a budget for this year, for example, and you say, okay, you know what, I want to spend 10 billion this year, mm -hmm. but I need, at the end of the year, you say, listen, I need 10, 500 billion more for this same year yeah. that I need to spend, okay? Mm -hmm. So there's a budget, there's a budget, there's a financing aspect of the budget that this is how we're going to finance the budget. Mm -hmm. Arrangements will be made in time as to where to get the monies from. So that, that extra budget mm -hmm. has, been, has been provided for. So, and so, so it's a case, of, and again, like I said earlier on, Nigerian government makes money every day. So it, we in, need to also, yes. so and, it's not and, new, and, and I wanted you to explain yeah. that, because our viewers need to also understand that you cannot spend government money without appropriation. Absolutely. Appropriation I, I, is a process, exactly. to say, an approval process, Absolutely. that every COVID that is spent, so there is an approval, is a window of approval that has not been spent and used. Exactly. And the, 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 the possibility of government being able to use it. Absolutely. Since there's a 2023, repurposing, the budget. Repurposing, basically. And you can see from the letter that was read, you know, that this government intends to do things the right way. Um, we've seen in the past, sometimes when government gets arrogant, they spend whatever. Later, you'll be hearing, oh, they spend this much. For example, all of the things that went on with Central Bank and so on. But this government is trying to say, listen, according to the law, and you could hear that in the, in the body of the letter, that we are, we are not going to spend this except we tell you that we're not going to even repurpose this amount except we, we get approval from mm -hmm. you. That's I'm exactly just imagining what that uh, President Tunobu will come out on a day to announce palliative plan for the nation, a comprehensive palliative plan. I believe because that's, some states, I believe that's coming. Yeah, and yeah. I think that it has to be a robust. Absolutely. Uh, I'm thinking I don't, don't even should call be. it palliative, really. Um, I, I don't like the word palliative because it sounds like a plaster on a wound. You know what I'm saying? There's a wound, isn't we it? We need a proper treatment for that wound. Mm. So, you know, before well, you just put a plaster it, on the you wound, have to do you're something. going to treat it, you're going to clean yeah. that wound and all of that before you, and then you're going to say, okay, when are we removing this plaster? Mm -hmm. And so on. Before we, yeah, so, so invariably, I would want, you know, things like reliefs in the immediate term, but a much more comprehensive idea will be sold as to where this economy is going to. Essentially, hacking back to campaign promises, you know, how much growth rate you want in the economy, how many employment do you want to create in the economy. We can even decide to have a job focus. Okay, I mentioned inflation, outside, inflation management earlier on to say we can't just keep talking about, you know, interest rates. It's not working to increase the interest rate and keep increasing interest rate. It seems not to be working. There are other ways also to assist yeah. you in managing inflation. But I think what needs to be also looked at now is to have a job focus, to target what they call in economics, you know, full employment. To say, okay, listen, how can we reduce this 33% unemployment to something much more reasonable? And indeed, I say uh, to people that, listen, whether in the, there's jobs in our public sector, still, we're not talking about people pushing files. We can also use that as a way of doing the palliative. You know, there's a job in the public sector, you know, which can, they can collaborate to the private sector, in the environmental sector, in the security sector, in mass mobilization, in social work. Do you know that 70% of people who travel out of Nigeria, all the Jakpa people that we talk about, they go to do social work. You know, they're taking care of, you know, mentally uh, uh, disadvantaged people, you know, old people, sick people and all. We haven't even started. So if we, if we do that, we'll be creating the enabling environment for the private sector to say, okay, now this is a country that is getting organized. Let's take money there and see how much money we can make I mean, in that country. The, the policy has thrown up, uh, of uh, the, the initial policy of this government has thrown up a lot of things. And it looked to me that um, the very 
relaxed and uh, the very gentle uh, Naira nature. That guy looks like to me now that he's the Naira. I'm referring to the Naira oh, as, as though he's a person okay. now. Yeah. He looks to me that he's been thrown into a clubhouse and the guy is dancing the way because <laughs> the Naira keeps going up and down right. these days. And you look at it. There are a lot of things that this government needs to fix in the immediate. I mean, it needs to assure food security. Right. The, uh, the, the security on a larger note mm -hmm. needs to be secured. Um, uh, human capital development, that also needs to be taken care of. Job security, f uh, foreign direct investment, mm -hmm. the fiscal monetary policy had to be intact because the, the, the Naira and the economy is on the, is on the brink. They need to manage it in such a way that things are not falling apart. Look at what some of these state governments are doing. For example, River State just yesterday made an announcement and uh, thrown open free transportation mm -hmm. for the citizens of Palliative. that state. That will cushion effect in some ways. Uh, other states have said, look, go to work for three days we and just sit at home and, you know, productivity. So yeah. a lot of these issues will come up. But how this government is able to tackle and uh, react to these uh, whatever, because it's a government that says it will eat the ground running. Right, and he has actually for 44 days so, or 45 days extent, after. No, uh, look, it's not how easy. much of the eating you of the know, ground? Okay, running. out of that 44 days, maybe about 25 days. You know, we hadn't had a national assembly. I mean, in that 44 days, special advisors were announced. You know, right now they are almost pushing the names of the ministers forward. We haven't actually had a government that has moved this fast, even since 1999. It takes a while to organize government on a national level. I saw Taraba State inaugurating this commission. Very few states are going to be able to do that in this short uh, well, period. Some, some people know? will tell you that Obasan yeah. first time was... Um, because of us, of course, you know, it was arranged, basically. I mean, it was military, military trying to leave. A lot of people who formed that government were ex-military people and so on. But this is... You, you, I could see that the government is actually moving quite fast. So I think a little bit more patient, a little, little bit more patient. And I think we're going to be able to get a very comprehensive plan on behalf of government. People are going to be, see themselves in that plan to see where their own hope is coming from. And uh, having taken the very difficult decisions that we need to take. Uh, Dr. Faswa, one question I was driving at with all of the list of the checklist on the minds of the likes of Mr. Wali Edo uh, and those who are around him because he's the one that is advising the president and the likes of uh, Mr. Zaka, those who are now advising the president about the issues of the economy. On a long list of what I've said, the checklist has to be, from your own mind, there has to be a low-hanging fruit because the suffering is immediate. That has to yeah. be dealt with. Right. So the 500 billion is a low-hanging fruit. Palliatives are low-hanging fruit. Things we can do in the immediate, you know, but... It, what I think we should also be more concerned Where would about... They, I mean, we're not talking about the breaking technicians. down of the palliative. What could the palliative now, That's be? part of what I suggested earlier. You mentioned what week is... I mean, whether, what's the uh, new guy in... Uh, uh, Fubara. Fubara, yeah, no, Fubara, yeah. Fubara. yeah. Sim Fubara. He's doing in River State. I wish a few more states would take such kind of initiative. The federal government can assist them. The transport infrastructure, we can decide that, okay, usually there's this issue of buying buses and coal, which we can use for two, one or two years, you know. Not very efficient, but hey, in the interim, if people are groaning, all right, then you want to do that, so you can spend some of the 500 billion on that. You can, you can use that to also create a few more jobs and pay people and expand, you know, the number of people that are being paid by government. You can use that to partner with the private sector. In, order to, in, in China, for example, the private sector is very, very key in their poverty eradication program. What they do, they have a fund, the private sector brings its own. The, in fact, the private sector guys will go build the houses for the people in the village, take them to these new houses, mm. build, uh, you know, uh, glass houses for them, uh, you know, to, to, to do more vegetable stuff and all of that. And their productions were going up times 10. Mm. And there was a bit of profit in it for the private sector. Guess how much? And I think that the government can set aside some mm. fund to say, listen, this fund we want to private, we want to partner with the private sector towards reducing poverty in the mm. country. And I think we need those kind of financial engineering, uh, whether you can leverage government funds beyond just saying, oh, we want to go and spend the money, uh, give the people money to go and eat, and at the end of the day, uh, you know, in a short while, the money is gone. So I think that we're going to be seeing more deeper, a lot more deeper thinking coming from that. And the, the, the other issues you mentioned earlier on in terms of things that need to be done, monetary policy, fiscal policy, 
I think by the time you have people manning this and there's proper direction from the president mm. as far, this is what I want, you're going to be seeing some real firepower going on in this economy. The U.S. spent about $5 trillion uh, on uh, what? during the COVID On period, COVID, yes. Uh, gave a, a child about $500. Nigeria gave spent an adult $50 billion or less. $1,200. We'll probably get there in so, time. <laughs> no, the, the question I'm asking is the administration of these policies. Because yeah, mind we've even, had yeah. a very bad... Uh, regime of administration of palliatives, where Indeed, uh, yes, uh, people we, we, are yeah. hoarding and doing all of those nonsense that people, right. food that people would have gone to people's homes during COVID are being kept somewhere. I, I mean, this these were were, were not so pal uh, palatable, and that one, on one hand is one thing that the government needs to start thinking about. And I want you to anchor on giving uh, your own view on how government needs to go about it because you look at it. A lot of the Americans at that time were getting $1,200. $1,200, by the way, is a lot of money. A lot of money. If you're just yeah, sleeping yeah. and waking up and right. feeding... Some are a, still on that. With your $100, yeah. you will fill your house Absolutely. with a lot of uh, yeah. food. Now, a lot of them actually stopped working. Yeah. They stopped working. Yeah. So it affected productivity also in the U.S. So from your own point of view, how can the government ad approach this? Because don't forget, there's the federal government, there's the state government, there is a local government. All the thinking has been on the metropolis, on the big Absolutely. cities. Absolutely. So, great what stuff. What about the people great stuff. in so the local area? I, I always say that the next part of growth in this country will come from the rural areas, which needs to be relinked with the rest of the country, where all of the agricultural production is... We just basically... See, sometimes I look at the arrogance with which we sit in the cities and expect the farmers to bring the food. We don't care. You know, we expect them to bring the food and we theorize and say all sorts of things. We're not actually helping this. So you have said it right. Now, I think that one of the things the government may do is to say, listen, rather than us giving this money to, let's say, poor people in urban areas and other places and so on, why don't we give the money to farmers to make their lives a bit easier for them to produce? Why can't we free how they can produce and much more? Free seedlings, for example. Yes, less, less expensive fertilizers yes, and no, things like that. tractors so and that, uh, so that then, implements. Of course, Indeed, you know, the problem we have now is inflation. Food inflation, 24.82% last month, mm. which is the key driver of, of inflation at 22.41%. You know, so we need to do something about that. So, ingenious ways. Now, so it's difficult to rush. It, sometimes when you rush too quickly, you make some of this. However, also, remembering that the people are going through excruciating pain, we can't spend too much time. I think and I'm hoping that very soon the government will give us that blueprint to say this is the magic we want to work. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a, some committees that have been set up mm -hmm. that are supposed to work on this. I believe that hopefully they are going to bring right. out some template to say mm -hmm. and to the people to assuage the feelings of the people and say, yeah. guys, this is the global picture. This is where we're going. Once you do that, people will queue behind it. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Tokpaya Faso, an economist, a former presidential candidate in the 2019 election. Thank you so much. Thank indeed. you very much. Uh, part of the committee at NEC includes uh, some of the governors, uh, like uh, the likes of uh, former CBN governor, Charles Soludo, who is the governor of Anambra, and hopefully when they come out with their own blueprint, we'll see where the government's direction is Absolutely. on these uh, uh, issues. Thank you so much, Indy, for your time. I appreciate yes, it. Thank you very much.